Welcome to this video where I'm going to show you everything from a real photo shoot from a senior portrait session. I'm going to show you the good, the bad, and the ugly, and everything that it did wrong, and how to make it better. Let's take a look. Now, part of the process is culling, going out and getting rid of the stuff that didn't turn out well. Maybe it was an exposure check and it didn't turn out, or you blew up the flash, or you overexposed, or you're underexposed. You make mistakes. And in this case, I have, according to my rankings, I already went through and ranked them all, 47 pictures that most people, except for this video, would never see. It's the pictures where the pose isn't great, the light, the flash didn't fire very well, I had to bring up the flash, the flash and light direction was horrible or ugly. Here I had to bring in some ambient lights getting better, but pictures that weren't all that great. Uh, and it's definitely not as good as some of the other pictures. So I go and get pictures that aren't worth editing, they're not worth my time, and I have better pictures that are similar enough that they don't need to see these. So I go ahead and unedit those. And I've star ranked them. I give mine usually three, four, five star ranking. Different people have different system based on your system and how you want to work it. Uh, but my four stars, the ones I really like, and then my three stars are ones that are definitely worth my time and putting some editing to, to them. So let's go and open them all up in Adobe Camera Raw. I go ahead and select them all, Control A or Command A on a Mac, right click, or even in this instance, because they're raw files, they'll open up in Adobe uh, Camera Raw by default. I like Adobe Camera Raw over Lightroom. Uh, the advantage of not having to reprocess going back and forth. Adobe Camera Raw has gotten really good in the last few versions in terms of its touch-up work, uh, its masking, and I find it works pretty well. And there's one feature here that I like in a little bit that's better than any other feature that Lightroom doesn't have, and I really kind of wish it did. So here we have the editing ability. All my pictures, I've already done my edits, I've already processed these, I've already given them to the client, uh, they're very happy with them. So I've done my adjustments and my changes uh, right here. Now what I can do is I'm going to go ahead and select all my images, and I'm going to come up and restore my default basically go back to the way they were to begin. So all the editing is not done. This is the way they came out of the camera. Now there were I shoot raw files uh, and they're all edited in a raw manner. This is default. Now my process, I don't adjust the white balance in camera. If I'm shooting raw files, the white balance can be adjusted later in post and it really doesn't make any difference in terms of the quality because it's an after effect. When you set your white balance in camera, that's like setting it after you take the picture, it processes the white balance and it spits it into a JPEG. If you're shooting a raw file, you actually do that in post-production later, and it doesn't make any difference in the quality. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and group them by settings, by the situation, the scene, and the lighting situation, and I'll start with the white balance. The white balance looks pretty good. Okay, all these are by the bridge. I'm going to go ahead and hold shift to click all of them, and I'm going to go ahead and adjust my settings. My white balance is a little bit, maybe not quite right there, I'll go like 5666. My flash is a rater to 5600 Kelvin. That's the color of the flash that I use, which is fairly typical on most flashes. I go 5600, and that cools it uh, or war cools it down a little bit from the 5900. That looks pretty good. And sometimes uh, different elements, like maybe your softbox is starting to age, or things that are bouncing around in the, in the situation, might change that a little bit. I am not one typically to shoot with like a, a calibration card. It's typically not the style I do. But I'm gonna go ahead and do eh, maybe 577, something like that. Uh, that looks pretty good. And then I'll go ahead and I'll choose my different settings here. That one looks pretty good in terms of the color. Because it's in shade, I'm going to actually go a little bit warmer. Shade is really around 6,500. I'm going to go somewhere in there. I'm mixing in some flash, controlling my shade a little bit, uh, something like that. This one, I definitely overexposed. I like the pose. I think it looks casual. It looks comfortable. So I'll bring down the pose a little bit. Negative. Couple stops moving around the highlights. If I go too much, it can start to look nasty, but negative. 40, 50, 60, the highlights are looking pretty good in that regard. And I'll make those quick, uh, abrupt edits. Typically, the first thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and select all my pictures, Control A, and I'll go to my Vibrance, and I'll crank that up a little bit. I'm like, well, well, should I really adjust the uh, saturation? A JPEG does it automatically for you. A JPEG out of the camera and a RAW out of the camera without any editing, the JPEG will have the colors pushed and enhanced uh, by default, unless you change some settings in your camera automatically. So I'm gonna go ahead and just change some of these settings just to help a little more pop. The colors come alive a little bit. I select all of them, I do it, it does it to all of them automatically. So all the colors now have my adjustments of vibrance of 9, saturation of 13, which is really nice. And I come in here and make my adjustments, brighter or darker, I can say, okay, this looks pretty good. Oh, that's not bad. Oh, the exposure needs to be a little bit darker here. Now I like some of the lighting on Ian, uh, well, that looks pretty good. It's a little bit bright in the background, so for exposure, I'm going to come in here, and I'm coming to my masking tool, letter K is the shortcut. And I'm going to go ahead and choose one with a negative highlights. Negative highlights, I'm going to make my brush nice and big. We can see it's feathered by the difference there of the big circles where it's hard, and it feathers all the way to the outer circle. I'm going to go ahead and turn down my highlights, negative highlights, and I'm just starting to brush out the areas that I want to brush down. Negative, maybe his hair go a little bit darker, so if something that gets on his hair, that's fine. 
just to darken that down a little bit. Go from there. And that, that looks better. And I'll just do those adjustments. Hit K again. I can adjust all those edits. Little hits this hair, that's fine. Just the feather part, I don't want all intensity. Now if only the tip of that outside of the brush, the small feather hits his shoulder, it's not gonna make that much change. Now if it goes over his face, like I go and click again, now his entire face is gonna have some adjustments. That's gonna be pretty abrupt. It doesn't look horrible here, uh, but I don't like it as much there. So I do that, and I'll go through and make an adjustment on all the pictures uh, by default, a negative adjustment, one that's de-emphasizing what I want to not focus on. The bright background, some of the glare water, and polarizing filters and other things can help with that. Sometimes you still get distractions. And I'll do one set all the way through of masking to blur, darken, get rid of distractions. And then I'll go through all the pictures a second time, and I'll do one for positive adjustments. Maybe brightening up the eyes, a little bit of dodging in the face, and something like that. One of the things that I talked about and I hinted at the beginning of the video, I can do some of these ed edits with an adjustment brush on many pictures at the same time. So if he's composed roughly in the same location, like we have several of these, he's in about the same location. There may be some slightly differences because one's wider, one's tighter. I hit K for my adjustment brush. I'm using negative highlights. And I'm gonna go ahead and go darker just so we can see it on the screen. And I'm gonna go ahead and darken, and this is way more than I would. But notice it does it to both of the, pix uh, both of the images. I can do this to one picture, I can do it to 100 pictures. Now if I have 100 pictures, it'll take a little longer for that adjustment. But I can make this adjustment, and it's literally doing it to multiple pictures. And I'm gonna go and do these, these are extreme adjustments, I get that. I wouldn't do it uh, on the most of them. But let's say we go ahead and select all my pictures here. I go to my adjustment brush. I'm gonna go negative extreme exposure so we can see it on the thumbnails. And I can go ahead and paint in here. And that looks pretty good in terms of, I'm not touching much of Ian. And that's what we're looking for. I'm not looking for what the picture looks like at this point because I know it's extreme. But that looks pretty good. And I've made those adjustments. Now it will happen on all my pictures. Now because I did that extreme adjustment, I can see, ooh, that's pretty intense. That's a little bit much. In some of the instances, Ian's on a different side of the frame, so that doesn't work well. But then I can see that adjustment if I'm doing a group picture, if I'm doing, say, directory photos where I've shot hundreds of people in the same location, in the same uh, part of the background. I could do this to a bulk of files, a thousand different directory photos, which I've done of for schools, a, a thousand pictures, bulk them up, dodge and burn, done. And it really saves you a lot of time. So Adobe Camera Law will let you do this edit. I don't think it's able to be done in Lightroom, at least it hasn't on the recent versions. And it's really a time saver if you're doing bulk batch photography. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. So I don't want that extreme effect, but I can do any adjustment to one or hundreds of photos all at the same time. Now computer processing is the process. So I'm gonna go ahead and here in this photo, uh, it's fine, Is he like this location in the shade. I'm gonna go ahead and use a negative adjustment to kind of darken up his arms because his the flash hit his arms a little bit much. I'm gonna reduce the exposure on his arms a little bit around the brightness around his head so it really draws in the face. Not that intense of the highlights, something like that, before and after. It really does put more emphasis on the face. If I was to summarize everything I do in Photoshop, it is really down to two words. Emphasize, de-emphasize. Emphasize, de-emphasize. It's super, super important. But emphasize what you want to be seen, where you want the attention to be, and de-emphasize what you don't want to be seen. To make those highlights or, or that distraction or that uh, glare off the head or the, the bright shirt that doesn't need to be that emphasized, de-emphasize that a little bit or darken the background a little bit to bring out the face. And here his face is fairly bright, but by darkening its surroundings, that makes a big difference overall. So those are my adjustments. I'll go through, I'll make adjustments all the way across. You're not gonna watch the entire video and watch me I'll put an hour or two into work. But to adjust the edits, get the colors right here. I've adjusted the entire picture a little bit bright. I'll go to my basic settings and I'll turn the exposure down a little bit. Turn my highlights down a little bit. And at some level it becomes a little bit too much. That looks pretty good. And then I can start to dodge and burn if I want uh, and make adjustments to the batch as well. So there is a lot of things you can be done in Adobe Camera Raw. Taking your photos, making the edits, making adjustments and it really goes a long way to making your pictures great. So thanks for taking a look. Uh, make sure to check out some of my other videos if you would. I have videos on how to do all kinds of techniques to make your life better and have less time in Photoshop